Hey guys, my name is Justin, and I recently transferred to Chapman University's Dodge College of Film and Media Arts. I came in as a documentary major, but I quickly realized my calling was in film production. Switching majors within the film program requires a whole application system where I have to submit an essay, a resume, a letter of recommendation, and most importantly, I have to make a two-minute film. Despite the massive challenges of applying to be a film production major, I decided to submit the application and a few weeks later, I was accepted to one of the most competitive majors here at Dosh College. In this video, I'm going to show you the short film I directed, filmed, and edited for the application. And after showing the film, I'm going to go right into how I made this film. It's pretty interesting. You're going to see some behind the scenes of the actors acting as well. So I hope you stick through the whole video. Without the use of dialogue, voiceover, or music with lyrics, make a film that is less than two minutes long about a character making a difficult decision. Show that the character is pulled in two different directions at an emotional level, visualize their process of consideration, and show that they make a decision. So that was the film I made. It's a story about a toxic, you know, um, an abusive relationship in the real physical world. And we follow a protagonist who is the boyfriend who happens to find a new virtual girlfriend in the metaverse. She treats him better than his real life girlfriend and he has to decide whether to stay loyal to his real life abusive girlfriend or to cheat on her, which he eventually chooses the latter. But then he stumbles upon his real life girlfriend who happened to be his virtual girlfriend all this time so let's talk about how i made this film thinking of someone making a difficult decision is quite easy if you think about it for example i can make a film about choosing what ice cream flavor i want by showing that i'm craving either vanilla or chocolate and finally making a decision but i wanted to make a good film with multiple layers and also to stand out while thinking about the story with layers that's when i randomly stumbled upon my vr headset and that's when i found my story a shot list is basically a table of all the shots you need during the day of the shoot and you turn that into a storyboard. Having both the shot list and the storyboard is crucial because you want to be on the same page with the actors when you're directing them. Then of course, I had to find my actors. Anastasia and I became friends in the first week of school because we met at the transfer orientation. She was the first person I contacted and she was more than happy to act as the girlfriend. For the boyfriend, I reached out to Freddie because we went to the same high school and he used to be in most of the school plays and I knew he had some acting experience. He said yes, so we were locked in. Location scouting is always fun because you get to use your maps 
and really look through the area to find the location you want to film. And in this case, I simply searched the pizza and after scrolling through some pictures, I found one with an outside patio, which I was also looking for. I also identified a large expanse of green space on my maps, which is typically indicative of park. So I decided to investigate both locations. I envisioned the virtual world scenes taking place at a pizza restaurant and at a park somewhere um, and have the have most of the physical world scenes be in my studio and my car and a cafe near campus. So day of the shoot. The first thing I did was letting my actors break the ice, which clearly they shattered the ice. Which I learned it was a good thing. Have your actors be comfortable around everybody at all times so that your film is smooth and you have good energy and whatnot. And then the next shot is just a different angle. I'm gonna be shooting here. Huh? And then Anastasia is gonna walk this way. Huh? And you're still looking at like that and you're like, what the fuck just happened? Then you come in. Still with the apron, yeah. you're like, ah, now I'm done with my work. Yeah, be sassy. Uh -huh. In the VR world later, this is not now, yeah. Anastasia gives you a flower, uh -huh. and then you're hold, trying to hold this flower. Yeah. So Ah, uh, but there's no flower. Grabbing it. Yeah, grabbing it, grabbing it, nothing, nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? All right, cool. Two, one, action. Peaches and cream. I mean, like, fucking peaches and fucking cream. <laughs> what? Can I get any fucking they peaches and cream? Special special go ahead. Ahead. Fuck do you want from me? Ow. <laughs> <laughs> So Anastasia is like sitting here, yeah, like that. <laughs> okay, okay. And then Freddy is yeah. walking this way. Okay. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> that didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> the filming took us about four hours and it went pretty smoothly. I had no challenges with shooting because the storyboard was well made and my shot lists were pretty clear. The post-production was the most challenging in the production of this film. If you've ever used a VR headset or have been on VR chat, the graphics are honestly, they basically look like animated video games with avatars that look like animation. Like, I don't really know what I'm trying to say, but I'm trying to say that it does not look like 4K real life ray tracing in video. So yeah, I wanted to emulate that, but how? Things just got a little more talkative in the AI universe. All well, the tech giants that raising red flags. Chat GPT can artificial now see, hear, and speak. Risk. This technology could also pose, and could jobs be at risk as well? Yep, you guessed it, AI. I used a deep learning text to image diffusion model, AI called um, Stable Diffusion. For the VR scenes, I took the normal footage, brought it to um, Adobe Encoder, exported the video into each frame, AKA images, chose a good image, put it into Stable Diffusion, wrote a prompt and let it generate a new AI generated image. And then it was just adjustments of numbers and sliders to get the image I wanted. Then I pressed the batch button where it takes my original frames and changes every frame into the, you know, the looks of the, the image that AI produced, which I also had to wait 30 minutes for it to do that. Went back to my editing software and imported the new frames as an image sequence and voila. There was my 10 seconds of the VR scene that took an hour to create. But then I had to do this five more times because this was not the only VR scene in the film. So to create the VR scenes took at least seven hours. Half of it was just waiting. Having the rough edit took about three hours. So the sound design took five hours. Then I had to color grade my film, but in, honestly, for this film, I had no time to grade it. I just threw in a LUT, which took 10 seconds. And then I had to export my video, which sounds daunting, but thankfully I have the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3970X with the uh, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 on my PC. So it took about 12 minutes to export the video. I hope you liked this video of me showing the film I made and also showing you the behind the scenes. You probably didn't know half of the terms I said or what I showed you, um, but that goes to show what it takes to be a film student here at Chapman University. I'm honestly pretty stoked to be in the film production major in the department and also taking classes starting next semester. So thank you guys for watching this video. Mm -hmm.